It started with a mistake, or at least that's what everyone thought. A few wires, hastily rerouted by a frustrated engineer, were supposed to solve a minor issue. But those same stupid wires would soon make the Lockheed P-38 Lightning one of the strangest, fastest, and deadliest aircraft of World War II nearly untouchable. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. The P-38 didn't look like anything else in the sky. Twin engines, twin booms, a cockpit floating like a bubble between them. To some pilots, it looked like a flying science experiment or a mechanical monster. To others, it was the future of aerial warfare. But behind that futuristic design lay chaos, electrical problems, engine failures, and aerodynamic mysteries no one understood. The P-38 was powerful but unpredictable. It could kill an enemy in seconds or kill its pilot just as fast. And yet, one small, almost laughable modification, dismissed by many as too simple to matter, would transform this unstable prototype into an aircraft that dominated the skies of the Pacific and terrified the Luftwaffe in Europe. How could a few wires change the course of air combat? How could an accident, a desperate improvisation, make a plane nearly impossible to shoot down? This is the incredible story of how genius, luck, and a little bit of stupidity created a legend. This is the story of the P-38 Lightning, the plane that became untouchable. Why the war and the need began. The 1930s were a decade of ambition and fear. While Europe edged toward another war, the skies themselves became the new battlefield. Air superiority, the ability to control the air, was no longer just strategy, it was survival. In 1937, the U.S. Army Air Corps issued a challenge. Build a fighter that can fly 400 miles per hour, reach 20,000 feet in under six minutes, and carry heavy guns. It was an insane request. No plane on Earth could do that. But for Lockheed, a young aircraft company full of dreamers, it was an opportunity. Leading the charge was Clarence Kelly Johnson, a brilliant, stubborn engineer who refused to follow the rules. Johnson envisioned something completely new, not a single-engine fighter, but a twin-engine powerhouse with turbocharged Allison V-1710 engines, a long range, and a concentrated nose armament that could shred anything in its path. The design that emerged, the XP-38 prototype, looked alien. Two long booms for the engines and a central pod for the cockpit and guns. Its performance? Astonishing. In early tests, it smashed speed records. The U.S. military was ecstatic. Then tragedy struck. In February 1939, the prototype crashed during a record attempt, killing the test pilot. The cause? Control lockup, a mysterious, deadly aerodynamic effect that made the aircraft uncontrollable in high-speed dives. The Air Corps almost canceled the project, but Johnson insisted they could fix it, that the P-38 wasn't broken, just misunderstood. What followed was years of trial, error, and heartbreak. Pilots called it the Widowmaker. Engineers called it unfixable. But Lockheed refused to give up. America needed the P-38. By the time the P-38 entered combat in 1942, its potential was clear, but so were its problems. It was fast, faster than almost anything else in the sky. It was deadly, with 4.5 caliber machine guns and a 20 millimeter cannon, all concentrated in the nose. It was versatile, able to escort bombers, dive on ships, or intercept enemies from miles away. But the plane had one fatal flaw, compressibility. At high speeds, especially in dives, the air flowing over the wings caused a shock wave that locked the controls solid. The nose would drop and the plane would plunge toward the ground. No amount of strength or skill could pull it up. Many pilots never recovered. Many never returned. The P-38's reputation began to suffer. The British rejected it outright. The U.S. Air Forces grew nervous. 
A plane that could kill its own pilot wasn't a weapon, it was a liability. Kelly Johnson and his Lockheed team were desperate. They tested everything, new flaps, air brakes, even redesigned tails. Nothing worked, until one quiet afternoon in 1943. During a test at Muroc Field, a young Lockheed engineer noticed something strange. The dive problem wasn't just aerodynamic, it was also electrical. At high speeds, certain circuits shorted due to vibration, causing the trim tabs to behave erratically. In simple terms, the plane's tail wasn't obeying the pilot's commands. So they tried a simple fix. They rerouted a few wires, insulated them differently, and grounded the circuits to prevent interference. The modification took only hours. The test pilot took off again, climbed high, dove straight down at 500 miles per hour, and pulled out safely. The engineers couldn't believe it. That stupid wire trick, as one mechanic called it, had stabilized the trim system completely. It wasn't magic, it was physics. The wires prevented an electrical feedback loop that had been subtly distorting the control surfaces at extreme speed. From that day forward, the P-38 became the first Allied fighter capable of sustained dives over 400 miles per hour without losing control. And suddenly, the Widowmaker was reborn. In the skies over the Pacific, it became a predator. Pilots like Richard Bong and Thomas McGuire, America's top aces, turned the P-38 into a legend. Its range allowed it to escort bombers deep into enemy territory. Its twin engines gave it safety. One could fail, and the plane could still return home. Japanese pilots called it two planes with one soul. They feared it because once a P-38 had you in its sights, there was no escape. In Europe, the P-38 story was more complex. The cold, damp climate sometimes caused engine failures due to carburetor icing. Yet its high-altitude speed made it an ideal photo-reconnaissance aircraft. P-38 recon pilots captured some of the most critical images of the war, including D-Day invasion photos. And on April 18, 1943, the lightning proved just how deadly it could be. In a secret mission known as Operation Vengeance, a squadron of P-38s intercepted and shot down the aircraft carrying Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, the architect of Pearl Harbor. Flying 600 miles across the Pacific, the lightnings arrived precisely on time and struck with surgical precision. That mission cemented the P-38's place in aviation history. A machine once dismissed as too complicated had become one of the deadliest tools of war ever built. Emotion and human side. The people behind the plane. Every war machine is, at its heart, human. The P-38 wasn't just metal and wire. It was the product of hope, loss, and stubborn determination. Kelly Johnson's team worked day and night, often sleeping in the hangar beside their prototypes. They faced failure after failure. Yet Johnson's mantra never changed. Be quick, be quiet, and be on time. Test pilots risked everything. Many died testing new versions, pushing limits so future pilots could live. They were the unsung heroes of aviation. Ghosts who never saw the victories their sacrifices made possible. Then there were the men who flew it into battle. Lieutenant Richard Bong, America's top ace with 40 kills, called the P-38 his guardian angel. He loved its power and trusted it with his life. But even he admitted it could be temperamental. You had to treat her right. She'd either love you or kill you. In contrast, some pilots hated it, especially those coming from nimble single-engine fighters like the Spitfire or Mustang. The Lightning required finesse, discipline, and trust in its technology. It wasn't a plane for everyone, but in the right hands, it was unstoppable. For the engineers, Hearing that a pilot had returned alive because of their fix, because of a few rerouted wires, was the greatest reward imaginable. And for the ground crews who kept them flying, each P-38 that roared off a runway was more than just a machine. It was a symbol of progress, proof that innovation could save lives. The war was filled with tragedy, but also triumphs born of human brilliance. The P-38 story reminds us that even the smallest ideas, the ones others dismiss, can make all the difference. By the time World War II ended, 
the P-38 Lightning had flown more than 130,000 combat missions across every theater of the war. It destroyed over 1,800 enemy aircraft, sunk ships, captured photographs, and changed the way engineers thought about flight. But perhaps its greatest legacy wasn't just its victories, it was its innovation. The P-38 was the first U.S. fighter to exceed 400 miles per hour, the first to feature tricycle landing gear, and one of the first to use turbo-supercharged engines effectively. Its twin-boom design inspired countless future aircraft, from Cold War interceptors to modern drones. And that stupid wire trick? It became a case study in aviation engineering, a reminder that even the simplest fixes can have world-changing consequences. After the war, Kelly Johnson would go on to create legends like the U-2 spy plane and the SR-71 Blackbird, both spiritual descendants of the P-38's radical innovation. The Lightning had fulfilled its destiny, not as a failure, but as a masterpiece born of persistence, precision, and a touch of accidental genius. Sometimes the line between failure and greatness is just a wire away. And sometimes the stupid ideas, the ones no one believes in, are the ones that change history forever. Thanks for watching.